Can we get cheap, fast, and deployable COVID-19 tests? According to a bunch of plucky British eggheads, yes. Researchers from the UK have developed the first ever shipping container lab for COVID-19 testing that features a mobile, low-cost, scalable, and open-source design. The lab units are called Contain, according to a preprint study in BioArchive. Writing in a news release, the paper's sponsor, Open Cell Lab, states each automated lab is rated biosafety level 2 plus, as designed and requires just one staff. The staff locks the barcoded samples before plating them. Then the plates are handed off to Opentron's OT2 liquid handling robots for RNA extraction. Finally, plates from the OT2 are put into the Quant Studio 5 machine for the quantitative polymerase chain reaction test. Patients take swab tests via a self-closing service window. OpenCell claims that one lab unit can churn out 2,400 tests per day. Test results are sent electronically via secured protocols that can be integrated for use by governmental health agencies. The labs could be scaled up by stacking as many as 39 units together to form a large-scale coronavirus diagnostic center. Writing in a news release, King's College London notes the labs retain full functionality as containers and could be shipped globally. Most of the equipment used in the containers is off-the-shelf technology, while the open-source design is up for grabs and available to contributing collaborators. Let's hope innovation can dig us out of the coronavirus pandemic before, you know, we get into the full economic meltdown slash zombie apocalypse territory. And guys, we at Tomo are not exaggerating how bad COVID can get. Don't believe us? Well, people were literally keeling over on the streets of Wuhan at the peak of the outbreak. We cannot say if China is being honest with reporting their death toll, but we can say for sure that the stats from Beijing smell like dead fish. 
As China's regime pushes a narrative of how Xi Jinping is winning the war on the coronavirus and that Wuhan only suffered a very questionable 2,548 deaths, images surfacing online of stacks of urns and long queues at funeral homes cast doubt over their dubious claims. According to Bloomberg, the families of those who succumbed to the virus in Wuhan were allowed to collect their cremated ashes at numerous funeral homes last week. And as they did, photos began to circulate online that showed thousands of urns being shipped in. According to Chinese media outlet Kai Xin, outside one funeral home, trucks delivered around 2,500 urns on both Wednesday and Thursday. Another picture showed 3,500 urns stacked on the ground inside. That one funeral home alone already exceeds the official number of those dead. Residents in Wuhan claim 500 urns have been handed out to grieving families every day from seven separate funeral homes all serving the city. This means the ashes of 3,500 people are distributed every 24 hours. The funeral homes in Hankou, Wuchang and Hanyang have told grieving families that they will receive the ashes before April 5th, the date of Qingming Festival, where people tend the graves of their ancestors. This means that 42,000 urns could be distributed in that 12-day period. On the 27th of March, one Wuhan resident going only by his surname Zhang told Radio Free Asia, it can't be right because the incinerators have been working round the clock. So how can so few people have died? Another local resident, Chen Yaohu, told RFA that nobody believes the official death toll, saying, they transferred cremation workers from around China to Wuhan to keep cremating bodies round the clock. Most disturbingly, however, was a post from a Weibo user saying she lost her husband to the coronavirus and had since been contacted by the police, warning her not to be too emotional and to stop posting online. As far as we know, Imperial College professors were the first medical experts outside China to sound the alarm after the initial coronavirus outbreak. Here's how they found out the coronavirus was a lot worse than what China said. UK-based experts warned that the Wuhan virus outbreak could be more widespread than previously thought. Citing Chinese officials, the BBC reports that the coronavirus outbreak in China's city of Wuhan has killed three people and infected over 200 as of Monday. The news comes days after researchers at the MRC Center for Global Infectious Disease warned that there may be far more infection cases than what Beijing had reported. Citing the MRC GIDA, the BBC reports that the China-based virus outbreak has infected two people in Thailand and one in Japan. The researchers say that their model, based on the virus, Wuhan's population and flight data, estimates that more than 1,700 people have been infected. China's National Health Commission said the outbreak is controllable and preventable, in a new statement dated to Sunday. However, the commission says the virus source and infection vectors remain unknown and that close monitoring on possible mutations is needed. Chinese authorities speculate that the virus likely crossed the species barrier from infected animals to people at a seafood and wildlife market in Wuhan. Citing an MRC GIDA researcher, the BBC says that the authorities should seriously consider the possibility of substantial human-to-human -human transmission. According to the BBC, the new coronavirus more closely resembles SARS than any other viral strain. Coronavirus is a large family of viruses and only seven are known to infect humans, including the new one discovered in China. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.